let's get yeah. to a conversation where there's a lot of bad <laughs> and let's talk about the state of the pittsburgh steelers offense and what the hell is going on there right now a couple numbers for context about where the steelers are on that side of the ball they are dead last in virtually every single advanced passing stat that you can imagine okay they are 32nd in epa per drop back they are 32nd in success rate so they've been the least efficient down to down and they have the worst ratio of high and bad leverage high and low leverage plays 20.4 percent of their dropbacks have gone for first downs this year that is dead last that in the seems NFL. low <laughs> dead last yeah. the Bengals are 31st at 22 percent so there's like an actual gap between where the Steelers yep. are and where the rest of the league is that's how bad they have been yeah. on that side of the ball we have people calling for Matt Canada's job as the offensive coordinator <clears throat> on a pretty simple level as we wade into this what the hell is going on there I have no clue I watched two games and it, it's so hard to point a finger at why offenses in certain offenses, especially this offense with Kenny Pickett, um, can't seem to get going. Is it good defensive play? Well, yeah, it is. But is it is it more so? It just it just seems like everyone's not on the same page, and it seems like it. They look. Like some of the receivers and tight ends look tired running. Like I don't know their I don't know their like workout schedule or their practice schedule <laughs> or if they're getting enough sleep. But I, when I watched the game against the Texans, the w the first thing that stood out in my mind was that like to just look tired, not really super fast, other than Pickens. And another thing is like. Well, man, maybe I picked the wrong game because the Texans defense was flying around and was like they're there fun was, to watch already. Gosh, and they're just D'Amico Ryan's has that unit rolling, and it just is there's not a lot open, and that's the, that's the biggest thing. There's not a lot open. Is it schematics? Is it calling uh, a play, certain plays on third downs? Is it what is it? I have. I'm with you. I, I don't know. And I feel like they should be better. I mean, they were supposed to be better. You have a first round quarterback in his second year. You got some weapons. I know Deontay Johnson's hurt, but they've invested along the offensive line. Roger Jones, who they drafted in the first round, came into this game, I believe, at the start of the second drive, immediately gave up a pressure. But this is a guy you drafted in the first round. He's supposed to be your starting left tackle of the future. So parsing blame here is just really difficult. And yeah. I guess I can start with what you think the structure of the offense looks like, because here's how I would frame it. You tell me if I'm right or wrong. They use a lot of motion in their run game, right? So there's a lot of jet motion when they're trying to run the ball. When they're throwing the ball, it's incredibly static. Like there yeah. just isn't a lot happening. They're asking these guys to win in some of these one-on-one -on -one situations, and they do not have the skill position talent that would allow you to kind of dictate matchups in those moments. So I just don't think that they're putting guys in positions to potentially get open beyond whatever the talent deficiencies are among that group. That's a really great call by you because I, I it, the more I think about it, yeah, it is just like a static two by two or a three by one when they're throwing the ball and you're right. They are using motion pre-snap. Um, it just, it just seems to me like the offenses that I, I can't speak into specifically what's going on in that room, specifically Matt Canada installing the offense. But the best offenses I've been on is that the pass game marries the run game. And not every pass formation needs to look like a run formation. Or if you run a power out of a jet sweep and you run power, like have a power pass off the same jet sweep. There's, you know, and, and, and that's honestly like what KC and Andy Reid was so good at. Like we'd have like, 15 formations and we'd have four plays out of each formation that looked the exact same. Oh, and sometimes three, he was like, Hey, the power of three, like let's do a screen. Let's run a, um, a, a run play and let's have a play action play off the same formation. So it just looks the same to defenses and they're not able to just, Hey, you know, and that's another thing too, is I've always been a big component of pre sh pre snap shifts, motions. That's how you blitz the defense. And if you're a defense and you're D'Amico Ryan's defense and you're seeing um, them just static and it, it's so easy 
to be able to tell these guys watch film on defense. It's so easy to tell what you're going to do because you've put it on tape. You are who you are. Very rarely do you see a brand new offense just change in week four to like, hey, week six, we're running a brand new offense. No, you have your core concepts. You have some stuff that attacks defenses on any given week. And that's just not what they're doing right there. They're, they're not moving guys around. They're they're it just and, and it just come back to what I said. I mean, it just looks it, it looks like every other offense, if that makes sense. It doesn't look like it's innovative. Um, it just looks like they're they're having trouble designing schemes to get people open because when I look at it, like it's hard for me as a quarterback. I'm biased. It's hard for me as a quarterback to put the blame squarely on um, Kenny Pickett when there's nothing open. Yeah, it, there's just a lot happening at the same time. One of the things I thought was really notable when you go back and watch this game, he threw four passes between the numbers beyond the line of scrimmage over the course yeah. of the game. Four. 19 of his attempts in this game were outside the numbers. If you go look at the first half, every single pass that he completed for like the first two and a half quarters, and this is not an exaggeration, was an out against cover three where it's immediately available to him and he's taking it or a check down. That's it. Those are the only two types of throws that he completed for an entire half of football. And there are so many examples where there was a play in the first half where he's got a high low down to the bottom and he's got pickings one on one up the right side. Mm -hmm. The high low is there. He doesn't even look at it. Yeah. He doesn't even look at it. He takes the one, and that's fine. You can take the one-on-one -on -one matchup to a guy that you think is a matchup advantage. That's, that's what his game is. But it feels like there's no depth to the way that he's trying to look at the offense. And I don't know if that's the way the offense is structured. I don't know if that's the way the offense is being coached. It's impossible to know, but that's what it feels like, is that there's no trust and no intentionality behind how he's looking at what their passing game is against these defenses. Yeah, and, and look, there's always going to be that issue when you watch something. I've had it happen before on like you're like, hey, it's being coached like, hey, take this matchup, take this matchup. You take the matchup and then, of course, like you look to the right to the right in film study. And you're like, oh, my gosh, that's wide open. Like, I'm an idiot. Like, why didn't it happen? But it does seem like a little bit more often that this is happening. And it just come back to like at the end of the day, Kenny's got to make the plays when they're there. And you're right. It was it was like an out route fest. And even when Mitch Trubisky came in, the first play was an out route to the right. Like I was just like, oh, like there has to be, like there's got to be some other cooler stuff. And they did some cool stuff on third down. And Kenny used his legs a couple times. A throw to his left to, to Najee Harris out of the backfield on third down was insane. And honestly, the the throw to to Pickens that he dropped on the little like come in and go up on and on the in the red zone I thought was awesome and and in pick and Pickens is like pointing to the air hey throw it higher but it was actually perfect like back shoulder like catch it so yeah. there's a lot going on there that they could better figure out and figure out fast and then on top of that the knee injury like how is that going to affect him how is that going to affect him getting out of the pocket is he going to play is he not you know all that stuff is 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 in the distance as well it's it's good that you mentioned that because I think that the knee injury and I'm not I'm never say it's a guy's fault that he got hurt, but the play where he got hurt I think is very indicative of what's going on there right now. It's fourth and one. They run a high low to the left. He has the dig on the high yeah. low if he sits yeah. in the pocket. He yeah. bails immediately. He bailed. Yeah. There were probably four, five, six times in this game where I'm yeah. not saying it's a clean pocket. But it does feel like he's got a beat longer than he thinks he does, and he's running himself into trouble. And again, is that bad pocket management? Is that a lack of trust in the offense and you feel like you have to instantly go into creation mode? I don't know the answer to that, but the habits that he's developing as a result of that distrust in what he's seeing, it's a troubling trend it, it, the yeah. way that I see it. I don't know if you feel that way. Well, it, it just it, he's got to figure out a way. Kenny does to, to, to feel comfortable in the pocket. That's, that's the biggest thing for any quarterback to have success is like, dude, you're going to get hit. It's going to be a muddy pocket. Very rarely is it this perfect arc that we draw on film and be like, Oh, look at this pocket. Like there's, there's green grass in front of you. Like, no, that's not the NFL, maybe 15% of the time. So he's just got to get something going. I have no idea what it is or what he needs to do, but he's got to have a better feel in the pocket. And maybe it is. He's not trusting us low alignment. He would never say that. I didn't think they played horrible. Can they play better? Sure. 
but it's just like at the end of the day, how do you try to fix this? And, and the question is, I have no idea. I would love to get some true serum and talk to the Texans defense about like three or four plays. There were yeah. two screens they snuffed out immediately, like yeah. immediately that were yeah. dropped for four or five yard losses in the backfield. There was a play where Jalen Petrie absolutely erased Jalen Warren on a handoff. He took the handoff from him in I the backfield. It. Is that, do you see something in trigger because of that? Is that just a play where you're, you, for whatever reason, you were in the right place at the right time? Because it feels yeah. like they were on top of a lot of different things, a lot of different even change-ups that the Steelers were trying to do. Yeah, and that that's that's I that just goes I feel like to D'Amico Ryan's at the end of the day, like so he's got that magic sauce and that defense. And it's not like they're they're playing anything crazy. They're playing too high look and then they'll mix it up with a one high and then third down they get a little crazy with it, but nothing too crazy. He's it's allowing his guys to play fast, but you can just tell it's getting coached really well. And it, and they're and they're and they're they're telling them exactly what to expect, and it's happening. And, and certain defensive gurus like that, um, they do that sometimes. And and it's just it's it's impressive what they're doing on in Houston for sure. It's simpler than what they did in San Francisco, but there's still some shit that they're trying four games in with a yeah, banged up secondary. That I'm like, all right. Like there was a play I think on the first drive where Petrie's lined up on the edge. And then he buzzes to the flat and they bail into cover two with him yeah, as the flat sweet. player on the right side. And I'm just like, I'm like, okay, because I remember talking to D'Amico at the combine and we were just, just talking about, okay, you have this defense in San Francisco where you've been able to build on it and build on it and build on it because of the continuity. You know, Fred Warner has been there for years. So you have these guys who just know this system in yeah. their bones. So, and there was a specific play, I think it was against Dallas last year. Hey, no, it was against Seattle. It was against Seattle on a Thursday night. I remember this vividly. It's third down. Fred Warner is lined up over the number one receiver to the right side. So all indications, if you're the Seahawks, it's man, right? It's man coverage. Yeah. And then they bail into cover two with him in the flat. I and know. that play yeah. specifically, I was like, it doesn't seem like you'll be doing a lot of that with these guys who are all learning a new defense. He's like, yeah, that's eventually you have to get to that point. But four games in, they've already been able to kind of throw some crazy shit against the wall. And when you combine that with just the attitude and the mindset they're yeah. clearly playing with already, I yeah. think it's pretty easy to get excited about which direction this is heading for Houston. There's no doubt. Yeah, you call we call that tricky too. It's like Fred Warner, I know exactly which because they used to do it. We we prepared for it. And all indications are man. And you 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 that's something, honestly, as a quarterback, you hate because, like, you have Fred <laughs> Warner on a running back. You're like, okay, it's man. He's all the way to the field. And for some reason, he's playing the cloud corner now in cover two. And you're like, you call it tricky two because it trick, it trick dicks him. Like, it's just tricky two. Like, this is what it is. And you're like, no, what are we doing? It's just like the worst. But yeah, I mean, it, you put that with the attitude effort. Like you said, I mean, this is going to be a scary crew. Yeah, I like the the flexibility on defense. You know, they had Petrie and Ward playing both in the slot and at safety, and that they're just trying a bunch of different stuff, and, and it's been fun to watch up to this point. The one last play I wanted to mention because I just thought it was hilarious. So the Steelers ran the little quick out cheat motion that Kyle Shanahan is calling it yeah. that the Dolphins do. And when they ran it, they just ran like a crunch play, like a crunch running play where it's yeah. just like wham, yeah. bam. It's just like a normal gap scheme run. So yeah. even when they're doing the, the most fun thing you can do in the NFL right now to create run openness in your passing game and to create some separation they just run a very simple gap oh, no. scheme run yeah. that's not even almost tied to the motion like that guy was lined up so far outside that it's not even like he's pulling anybody out of the run yeah. when they yeah. run the ball I, I remember that, that, that to yeah, me I kind agree. of speaks to where they're at right now it's like yeah. there's shit for shit's sake that has no bearing <laughs> on what's actually happening <laughs> i totally agree I, I watched that and i thought to say i'm like why are they doing this like what are you doing like come on <laughs>